Good morning, everyone, for this new episode on TransConnect. Today, I'll be talking about the HLA antibody testing algorithms in kidney transplants. It is a very important topic, essentially, because uh, algorithm is something which we all need to follow, and there is no single test that you can actually nail down upon to actually go for the transplant. So you have to have a battery of tests, and once you have these tests, you need to know which test complements the other test, and based on that, you can take a your decision as to whether you can go ahead with the transplant or you need to desensitize or actually not go for the transplant when the patient is highly sensitized so that is the decision you will be that will be based upon the testing algorithm and i'll be talking about that my name is dr mohit chaudhary i'm a senior consultant in transplant immunology from new delhi so coming to what hla is i always start with this it is human leukocyte antigen it is a misnomer. Why? Because it's not just present in humans and it's not just present in leukocyte. They are present in numerous WBCs. So that's why it is called as a misnomer. But nonetheless, it is very widely used and uh, the less uh, common term is the MHC or the major histocompatibility complex, but they are usually uh, said interchangeably. So, I mean, you can use any of the term. I am Sorry. So, uh, so it's a misnomer. Now, MHC or the major histocompatibility complex is critical for immunological specificity, histocompatibility, and susceptibility for autoimmune diseases. In human, it is uh, the region which is there on the chromosome six. It's the six P that is the small arm of chromosome six, which occupies 140 genes, more than 20% of which have functions in immunity. So, very important region. Coming to now specifically for kidney transplant, what are the early and the late challenges that we face? Early challenges, uh, you know, there are uh, things like surgical challenges, ischemia reperfusion injury, some uh, acute tribunal rejection or cellular rejection. So these are some early challenges which a clinician may face when the transplant happens. There are late challenges as well, like infection. Infection is a very uh, dreaded complication of some transplant, all solid organ transplant for that matter. Uh, malignancies, you may have some kind of lymphoma malignancies. You may have metabolic complication like uh, post-transplant diabetes mellitus, and you may have some cardiovascular disease. And all said and done, no matter how much uh, sensitized you are, sometimes the kidney behave or the solid organs behave very uh, erratic and they have a tolerance in spite of the sensitization. So sometimes no matter you, you are very wrong, but still the kidney adapts to it and that is known as tolerance. Coming to what is IRI or ischemia reperfusion injury, this happens as an acute condition and specifically in uh, depends upon how much hypoxia or ischemia time is there from the pre-transplant to the uh, time when we are actually transplant. So the ischemia time actually governs the ischemia reperfusion injury. And this uh, also depends upon the storage time and the storage conditions in which the kidney uh, from the donor is going into the patient. So very important and this may cause delayed graft function or primary non-function in the transplanted organ. Second is ACR or acute cellular rejection. It is not seen nowadays so often because of the immunosuppressive regimen that we follow. It is very potent and that's why ACR is not a thing which exists uh, that much. We have good uh, induction protocols and that is why it is reduced now. It is characterized by arteritis, uh, tubulitis, and interstitial infiltration, mainly of the acute uh, neutrophils and other cells. So if you see if you difference between the normal uh, uh, biopsy, kidney biopsy, and the this cellular ejection, you can see these inflammatory cells have infiltrated, and that is why you can uh, safely say that this is uh, acute cellular rejection, although this is seldom seen nowadays. Coming to the dreaded complication, that is the antibody mediated rejection. Actually, there are three types of AMRs. That is hyperacute. Hyperacute happens within uh, as soon as you transplant, and that time the kidney turns uh, uh, blue, and that is when you are having this hyperacute rejection. And this happens mainly because of the uh, already preformed antibodies that are present in the patient, whether due to uh, pregnancy, transplant or transfusion, the antibodies are already there. You transplant the kidney and uh, as soon as you transplant, there is a hyperacute rejection. So kidney is gone. 
so this the other type is the acute rejection which happens a few days after the transplant and this may be occur because of donor specific antibodies and uh, this this can be pre prevented and of course hyperacute can be prevented if you do a cdc cross match so if your cdc cross match is negative that means you will not face a hyperacute rejection mostly you may have a acute or a delayed uh, antibody mediated rejection now delayed or a chronic antibody mediated rejection may happen uh, even uh, after like say years together and this may happen because of the de novo donor specific antibody development or existing antibody which was there which was subclinical so these are the three type of rejection antibody mediated rejection which may occur coming to hyper acute uh, rejection we know that it is because of the preformed dsa and uh, this generally happens uh, because of the uh, antibody which is already present and the cdc cross match is positive in these cases so what you do to circumvent is you do a cdc cross match if it is positive we do not go ahead with the transplant unless proved otherwise so this can happen these preformed antibodies like i said can happen because of the pregnancy transfusion or transplant second coming to the amr what is the mechanism so basically it is the formation of a donor specific antibody whether it was pre transplant or it was a de novo donor specific antibody de novo means which has been formed during the transplant or after the transplant which was not present before so this donor specific antibody attaches to the endothelium which has the hla antigen hla class 1 and 2 once it attaches it will fix the complement and the complement will be activated and this complement will activated will lead to formation of membrane attack complex and this will cause the lysis of the cell and eventually the endothelial cell necrosis it can also recruit other polymorphonuclear cells and cause the release of cytokines which can cause endothelial cell coagulation necrosis and uh, other things inflammatory cascade so this donor specific antibody is ultimately responsible for all the causative effect so what are the tests that are available for antibody detection the tests are hla antibody screen or pra you can have the cross matches which can be both physical like you actually do it and there can be a virtual cross match where you actually do not have to do a cross match you do two tests uh, and you compare that both so physical if you see the manual cross matches are the cdc cross match the lysate beds humanx cross match or a flow cross match then you can do a single antigen bead assay and do a donor antigen typing to see for the virtual cross match other tests are non hla antibodies so there are hla antibodies and there are non hla antibodies these non hla antibodies are also known to cause a rejection and most of the acute and chronic antibody mediated rejection and that's why sometimes we need to do and check for these non hla antibodies so what is a cross match test and why when we are doing screen we still need to do a cross match it is same like we do in red cell serology see antibodies against low antigen low incidence antigens are likely to be missed then the most importantly it is a mock transplant so it is like uh, something which you are doing in vitro so it is a mini transplant that you do in vitro and that's why you need to know how the kidney is going to behave when you actually transplant it so this was developed in an attempt to identify recipients who are likely to develop acute vascular rejection of a graft from a given donor so hyper acute i have already discussed when there is a hyper acute rejection it is because of the pre formed donor specific antibodies where your cdc or serological cross matches uh, supposed to be positive so so what are the methods different cross matches like i said you can have a cdc cross match the problem with cdc cross matches that it is a very crude test it is a raw test so once that comes uh, i mean it is very specific but not that sensitive so the cdc cross match need we need to increase the sensitivity how do we increase the sensitivity we add something to it and which increases its sensitivity and that is anti human globulin so this ag cdc or modified cdc cross match is a cross match which is far more sensitive than the crude cdc cross match but it is still not as sensitive as a flow cytometry cross match or a lysate based numex cross match but since you have to do it many centers uh, in fact most centers in the country would not proceed with the transplant without cdc being negative so if you are doing it as well as master it 
so cdc cross match you do with an ahg cross match so it is cdc of ahg augmented cross match the second is the flow cytometry cross match which you do for the t and the b cells again the third is the lysed based cross match now how is it different it is different because it is checking the class 1 and class 2 antibodies rather than t and the b cells so it is more specific that way uh, there of course it has got its own fallacy but it's like a, a, a if you don't have a flow cytometry in your department especially so you can go with this lysed based luminex cross match we have a paper on this lysed based cross match which you can refer to it explains all the good and the bad about this cross match and how you can you know interpret it coming to the last one which is the virtual cross match it is for sap single antigen bead assay that you do in the patient and you do an donor hla typing so basically you are trying to find out the antigen in the donor and antibody in the patient so you virtually see if they both are positive and that will be a positive cross match so what is the technique for cdc cross match very simple you take donor cells that is the donor lymphocyte which will contain the hla antigen and you take patient serum which will contain the antibodies you add a complement and then you add a dye so if there is an antigen antibody reaction obviously the and the complement there is there the complement is going to uh, attach to the antigen antibody and it will cause the membrane attack lysis membrane attack complex to form and call the lysis of the cells once the lysis happen you add the dye and the dye is going to enter the cells that is what you need to see and see that if the dye is entering obviously then that is a positive cell so you need to see overall how many cells are positive and give it in a percentage so this is a simple process so basically donor cell and uh, and patient serum you add complement and add the dye so that is how you interpret the cdc coming to flow it is similar to cdc but it is done on a flow cytometer and the you have donor cell which have the lymphocyte which are the lymphocyte containing the hla antigen and the recipient serum containing antibodies then you add the fluorescent labeled antibodies against human igg so you add these antibodies and then you see for the mean channel shift so if the shift is more than your control then it is positive that is your positive control or negative control whatever you are putting with it and if it is around the negative control it is negative so very simple technique but you need to have a flow cytometry uh, flow cytometer in your department or wherever you can do it so once you have that it makes the test very sensitive but sensitivity also means sometimes it may give false positive so that is the problem with the flow cross match uh, it has to be done in expert hands so many transplant clinician do not use flow cross match they rely on cdc cross match along with dsa by uh, luminex that is the virtual cross match or luminex based cross match others contest that flow cross match adds important function and it should be considered in the context of dsa and cdc cross matching to help the overall opinion on the likelihood of immune complication so this area remains controversial and no clear recommendation can be done this time. coming to the most advanced technique that is the luminex luminex is the the most advanced technique when it comes to hla antibody detection it, of course you can do an hla antigen typing also through luminex so it can detect both antigen and antibody separately but coming to what antibody uh, the topic is antibody so we'll be discussing mainly the antibody so how how this luminex technology works is it has got these beads these are polyesterine beads uh, which are coated with hla antigen so once these have the hla antigen they are they also have a fluorescently labeled dye so in different proportions so you have one bead which is different from the other bead depending upon the dye mixture which is there inside and this dye fluoresces so once the bead this bead passes through the flow cytometer like instrument that is the luminex actually it fluoresces so this key tells you which bead is in question also you add a secondary phycoerythrin label anti human igg antibody that is a secondary antibody to detect whether it is positive or negative so all this when it passes through the flow, flow cytometer based luminex instrument so it gives a mean fluorescent intensity in the flow cytometer the reading out is the mean channel shift here it is mfi or mean fluorescent intensity so depending upon your mfi values you can say whether this is positive or negative to explain you further so suppose this is one bead bead set 21 this is bead set 26 depending upon how much concentration of the dye is there this bead set 21 is different from the bead set 26 suppose you label some hla antigen on each 
So each bead will have one specific HLA antigen. And if that bead comes positive, you are positive for that HLA antibody. So this means that it gives you a single antigen. Each bead will give you a single antigen detection. So this is the Luminex instrument and you, you can see that there are lasers here. So, and this is the cell that passes through it. So once it passes through, there is a green and the red laser, which is going to actually uh, tell you whether the bead is positive or negative. So this is polyesterine beads, like I said, imp impregnated with different ratios of two fluorescent dyes. So this gives is the classifier signal. So basically it will tell you 100 distinguishable weed population. Now you add a second, third bead, third, third uh, fluorescently labeled uh, 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 dye, which is the AHG. This is the reporter signal. And this will tell you whether the bead that you are assessing is positive or negative. So readout read in conventional flow is the, like I said, is the mean channel shift. In Numinex fluorocytometer, it is the MFI or mean fluorescent intensity. Coming to the third lumen, uh, cross match, which is the Luminex cross match. Now, this is a lysate based cross match, which is essentially not practiced in many countries, but because of its utility in the sense that it can, you can store the lysate for longer time. You can actually detect whether class one or class two is positive. And because of the low cost, this is very widely used in our country. And if you know basics of the Luminex cross match, and if you know the, uh, the pros and the cons, then you can safely use this in your algorithm. So what you do is, so basically it's the same principle, donor cell patient serum, donor cells will have the HLA antigen and patient serum will have the HLA antibody. So if there is lymphocytes, you need to take out the HLA from there. So what you do is you pay you, the donor lysate is made. So how you do that? You add a detergent. So once you add the detergent, the HLA, anti, HLA antigen will come out and you can use that HLA antigen for your detection. So once this HLA antigens are out, after using the detergent, you add a capture bead. Now these capture bead are two, capture bead one and capture bead two, depending upon your HLA class one or HLA class two. So if you are HLA class, so if you have, then you add the sera. So basically if you have an antibodies to HLA class two, they will bind here. If they are antibody to HLA class one, they will bind with this capture bead, which already has this HLA class one. If there are antibodies to both, it will bind with both. If there are antibodies to none, it will not bind. So you will just have this. So once you add this, you add a secondary antibody to detect it. And that is how you detect the uh, MFIs in Luminex cross match. So fairly simple donor cell patient serum. You add a capture bead to capture the HLA antigen. So then it becomes coated with HLA antigen. This because this is synthetic bead. And then you add the sera. So sera, if that sera has the corresponding antibodies to that antigen, it will bind. And then you see it with the secondary antibody. So this is how you read a Luminex cross match. So this is our paper on the Luminex cross match, which is uh, published uh, uh, way back in uh, 2018. So I think it should be very helpful to you. And uh, you can see that we have suggested that Luminex cross match is useful and sensitive, uh, sensitive technique for the direction of anti-HLA antibody in pre-transplant renal patients. And uh, it should be complemented with other tests like Luminex antibody screen, single antigen bead assay, etc. Now we have talked about single antigen bead assay a lot of times, and that is why it is very important to know what it is. It is the most sensitive test. Like I have explained, it is one bead will have one antigen and you can detect each antigen specifically and sensitivity wise. So it's both sensitive and specific. specific. It is very rapid. It's got high throughput. You can do multiplexing. So everything is good, but please remember it has got its problem that I will explain you how. So if you see, this is how the uh, representation comes when you have this single antigen. You can see that the ones you can stratify also the ones which are on the left side are having higher MFI values. That means high degree of fluorescence and that is why they are very highly positive and so all beads will give you some fluorescence. So obviously you need to categorize. So we take a cutoff value of 1000. And so that is how we take it. So this one, this 
up till here you see that this is positive and after that it becomes negative so what are the interpretive consideration of solid phase assay please remember this is not the final answer single antigen bead assay is sensitive and specific but you still need to know that it's a semi quantitative test every lab may have different mfi values so you need to standardize your own lab with your flow cross match and other test and see how it is coming positive or not and you can't just write okay my mfi values this and this has to be positive it has to be compared with your own standard protocols so it's a semi quantitative test it does not mean this is the amount of antibody or the amount of uh, the fluorescence doesn't mean that this is the antibody amount so it's a semi quantitative test many a times it may show prozone phenomena prozone phenomena we are all aware what it is uh, so you can see here prozone phenomena you know, it means that there is a zone of equivalence so if there can be an antibody excess where the antibodies are too many and you may not be able to detect or there may be an antigen excess so ideally the zone of equivalence will have both antigen and antibody in equal proportion and then only you will have a good reaction so once the antigen antibody reaction is equal you will have a better test sometimes what happens is when you dilute the sample because the antibody is too high uh, the test becomes positive so earlier it was negative when you dilute it it becomes positive because of the prozone phenomena so other problems with the uh, tests are uh, uh, you may have a lot specific variation between the tests you may have uh, some loci which are better represented some are not that re well represented you may have inter lab uh, variability between the lot between the user so you need to know and you may have sometimes a lot of background so you need to see that your test is without any contamination and it is clear to you know interpret that is very important. so advantage luminex technology is shown to be more sensitive it is a major advantage is it allows accurate evaluation of the sera containing complex mixture of antibodies so you can you can go for all the loci hla abc dp dq dr you can even look for non hla antibodies like mik k and it is very sensitive and very specific so less of false positive and false negative so what is a virtual cross match very simple you do a single antigen bead assay which we just spoke about in the patient look for the antibody and you do a donor hla typing so look for the same actually antigen in the donor if actually antigen is present in the donor and antibody is present in the patient you do a virtual cross match and you see and that is known as a virtual cross match it is positive if the antigen is present but there is no antibody in the patient then obviously that is a negative cross match so we have spoken about all the tests now we need to know why one test is not important or we need to have more than one test so there is no single test it is uh, which is 100% accurate and sensitive the test algorithm for compatibility increasing the increases the sensitivity of the testing process and there are several testing algorithms if you see the western literature there are many you have a basel approach we have a leiden approach minnesota approach so these are all approaches for algorithm testing in uh, kidney transplant we do not have we did not have in fact a testing algorithm study published from india so there was uh, a study done and uh, we managed to do it i will be sharing that with you so this is the basel approach so what happens is in most of these approaches if you see they do an single antigen up front and then do a ctc cross match or other tests like antibody screening etc but the problem with this is that single antigen cost is a little constraint and many a times the patient may not be able to afford it and that is why we can't do single antigen upfront in many cases so you need to know whether you want to do that or not. if you see in leiden also they screen the patient with cdc and no matter what they are when the patient is then they stratify whether the patient is highly uh, sensitized or uh, immunized or not immunized and depending upon that they will do go for a single antigen and later on the cdc minnesota if you see they will do a solid phase assay up front and after that after that they will start to do the other test so once they do that they will be able to perform the test so here also if you see single antigen bead assay is done up front so single antigen bead assay you can i mean it's most sensitive most specific but what would you need to know that it involves cost so can, can we do that so that you need to actually see so there was a need for separate algorithm because single antigen bead assay which is sensitive and specific also means that there is more cost 
so we saw that algorithm of two screening tests basically the flow cross match and antibody screen if we did up front there was a sensitivity of 100% and of, of course you want to do a cdc cross match that is a necessary pen so you can do that so we came out with our own approach which we called as a delhi approach which is done in a multi centric study across the north india which is the an inexpensive algorithm which can be replicated almost all transplant immunology laboratories in india so these are the different approach and this is our approach for delhi so we suggested the following algorithm so whenever there is a cdc cross match if it is positive obviously you don't proceed generally especially a t cell cross match if it is negative you go for an antibody screen and luminex or flow cross match if it comes negative go ahead with the transplant there is no problem however if any of this comes positive you go for a single antigen beta assay and a virtual cross match once that comes positive you know the specificity of the antibody generally what we do is although we have experience now of dealing with antibodies with greater than 10000 mfi but generally if there are multiple antibodies with greater than 10000 mfi it is generally i mean it is a risky area so you need to be wary of the same and you need to know that okay i need to stop here otherwise you can go for a desensitization or a paired kidney exchange and go ahead with the transplant so this is the paper that we published a multi centric study called the delhi approach it was published in transplant immunology so take home message alternate approach is to detect hla antibody if present it is identified by luminex sab assay virtual cross match can be done not testing algorithm is the answer why because one single test is not able to do everything so test algorithm comprises of two or more tests done in sequence or series to enhance the sensitivity and with our study we have said that antibody screen and flow cross match if combined together or a luminex cross match combined together so basically an antibody screen and a cross match combined together will give you a 100% sensitivity so the way forward is no single test cell based or hla bead based is 100% accurate lab should use algorithm you can develop your own algorithm you can take our algorithm we did not have a, a algorithm yet so to the best of our knowledge there is no compatibility testing algorithm study published from india now we have our own approach which we call the delhi approach you can use that safely or simulate that in your lab so i would like to acknowledge all the authors of our paper on delhi approach paper uh, i would like to acknowledge my team who have been very helpful uh, in uh, compiling the data and always help me in my endeavors here and of, of course my teachers who have been helpful in teaching me of what i know today and uh, uh, i would like to admit that uh, i am still learning so thank you so much if there is anything that you want to know about this algorithms or approach uh, in solid organ transplant uh, especially for hla antibody testing you can write in the comment or write to me directly so all the best and happy learning thank you so much.